Bucks fans. This is Michael Plus from Real Bucks Talk. Joined here, as always, my co-host Mark Ramirez. And as we talked in our latest video about Byron Leftwich being fired, in today's video, we wanted to discuss who are some potential options to take over for offensive coordinator. And obviously, the first one that came up to mind is is this guy right here, um, and Todd Munkin, who has been an OC for the Bucks before. We all know him. Uh, and now he's the OC for Georgia, back-to-back -back national champions. So he's doing a great job there. He did a good job here when he was with the team. Um, so as you see there, Ian Rappaport talking about it, um, you know, could be back. So what's our initial thoughts of that potential move? I mean, it could be something exciting. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I mean, <laughs> those who watched Hard Knocks from the Bucks. That was his big time quote in that wide receiver room with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Just, I mean, he was the beginning of all that. So if there's a guy that's going to be comfortable to come over here. He, he knows the facility. He knows about the players, at least the, the big players that we have right now. I mean, how to utilize these weapons. We know he likes to push the ball deep. Yeah. He had Jameis Winston to work with. So how much was it was Jameis Winston's inability to avoid the turnover or how much was it was a system because in college he's got two back-to-back -back national championships. I know it's a huge different game because uh, everyone's gonna bring up like the Nick Saban, Steve Spurriers, but then what about the Pete Carroll's of the world? I mean, they, sometimes you just need a second chance to get in there, but either way he was successful. And does he want to make that jump? I mean, Georgia has been really good to him. Uh, a friend of mine at work is a huge Georgia fan. They, they're paying him handsomely to stay there at Georgia it's going to have to be one hell of an opportunity for him to leave. But if he did, what a better opportunity than the Bay Buccaneers, who he's familiar with, right? And hopefully it's something that the Bucs are truly thinking about because he's getting a little bit of the younger mindset, but also pushing the ball deep down the field. So, mm -hmm. so hopefully that kind of blends in with Todd Bowles, what he wants, and right. a guy that's actually done it in the NFL before too, not just some college guy that has good with analytics. Even though we do like analytics, you got to be able to have the – the cojones, right? To actually mm -hmm. call it in the NFL too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Todd has shown that, you know, he, he's got that ability to, you know, be a pass first guy. I think that's his philosophy. He likes to throw the ball around, but he also understands when to run the football, which is a big thing. Understanding, you know, how to mix it up, how to utilize your play action, how to play to your strengths, all those good things that, you know, you've seen from him at Georgia, but also from his time that he was here. I mean, when he was the offense coordinator for us back in, you know, 2016, I think it was through 2018, he did a good job of taking the passing offense to top 10. Um, and that's even with Jameis's mistakes. They were still top 10, I believe, in DVOA, which is uh, a very good metric to, to measure, you know, success by. And uh, so he had a lot of good things there going for him. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he would be a top candidate. And speaking of candidates, let's take a look at Pew Report's list and obviously Todd Munkin is the top guy there as you see his picture uh Pew Report has done a fa fabulous job so far uh yeah. breaking everything down and really have been on the money so they talk about some experienced coordinators um and as you see there Todd Munkin um you see the stats there again pretty solid again nothing in, you know 11th there in 2018 and that's when he was calling plays so yeah, that was obvious. a great part too like there right. was a time where Dirk Cutter tried to take over play calling and the offense looked even worse, looked terrible. Right. And then yeah. he's like, yeah, I called that game. Like, yeah, it looked like it. It looked like trash. So I mean, Tom Lincoln, his offense does move. It's a downfield, push the ball down the field, but a better quarterback will produce. I mean, look what he did with Stetson Bennett. I mean, the mm -hmm. guy went from a nobody to now he's a two time ch uh, national championship winner. And now he's got his name like stirring in the NFL draft topics now. But go right. ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you talk about the big money here. Uh, they make a great point. He's getting two million per year for Georgia, so that's a top payment in college football, especially for an offense coordinator. So yeah, the Glazers will definitely have to open up the 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 checkbook and probably offer him close to or even more than that um, to for him to come here. Uh, and you see here Jer Jeremy Fowler talking about he's got a lot of interest. Um, so yeah, that would be a lot of fun to you know, make that addition. Um, here's another, you know, this is a tie with Jason Light here, Bill O'Brien. So, I mean. And Tom Brady. 
yeah, Tom Brady. So there's a, a connection there. He wouldn't be bad. Again, he's had a lot of uh, success, um, especially with Houston. Did a lot of good things as far as adjusting to their personnel, doing some different things there. So what's your thoughts on potentially Bill uh, coming in? And that's something we talked about today. It's like, are we going to try and find the best offensive coordinator or the best offensive coordinator for Tom Brady? And if it was a Bill O'Brien, is he necessarily the best one? No. Is he the best one for Brady? Probably, I would assume, because just because that connection with Light and just the ties. But mm. is he the best one? I wouldn't necessarily say he is. I mean, so if you hear Alabama fans, they're like, yeah, I take him, get rid of him. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I mean, well, we'll see. But I mean, that is a big name. He's shown he can do it in the NFL ranks. Mm. And it's not just offensive coordinator. I mean, I almost want good. I mean, because it wasn't just. Byron Leftwich, they got fired. Your QB coach retired. You have your wide receivers coach open. So I want young, fresh minds all in there. And that's why they did this. Clean house, a start all over again. Maybe they, they did get this analytic stuff in their brain. And maybe they're thinking it is a lot more than fantasy football. So is Bill O'Brien the type that can bring in young minds too and adapt to the right. game? Or is he not? And we do need guys like Todd Munkin or some of the other guys on this list who I really like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, you show Frank Wright here, you know, former Indianapolis Colts head coach. Again, did a pretty good job, especially when he was just an offensive coordinator. Um, they talk about his time with the Eagles, also the Chargers. So he's he's done a pretty good job. I mean, offenses have ranked in the top 10 four times. That's, that's pretty good. Um, and obviously he helped Nick Foles, you know, get to the, the Super Bowl and beat Tom Brady. Uh, so he wouldn't be bad. Uh, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury. Very interested. Uh, that's an interesting name, uh, just because I believe. Let me see where they show it. He was at one point. Uh, yeah, he at one point he played with Tom Brady. He was like the backup QB, or he was a draft pick. So, um, yeah, very interesting. So, what do you think of those two guys potentially? I mean, Cliff is just the air raid offense, spread it around. Let's push yeah. the ball. He's not going to be able to do what Kyler Murray does at all if Brady does stay. But, I mean, still, behind him, Gabbert, Kyle Trask. I mean, does he know how to use those types of players? We'll see. But, I mean, none of them are Pat Mahomes either. That's an air raid offense. But you can see that being sprinkled in the NFL. Murray, you, you heard his issues with studying, and they had to put that in the contract, and they have to take it out of the contract. So maybe it wasn't just the offense. Maybe it was the quarterback not being the right fit. But – Either way, he, he's shown he can do great offenses and a good young mind. I would not mind that. But let's see what happens when he gets back from Thailand from <laughs> partying, what it seems like. De-stressing. Yeah, right, right. Absolutely. And, you know, the one name that I think has caught both of our eyes, and we want to talk about him here, is uh, Brian uh, Johnson from Philadelphia. Um, you know, he's the Eagles quarterbacks coach, but he has a history with Kyle Trask. He was their O.C., for the time that he was there, especially in the starter and, you know, former quarterback himself um, and has really done a great job of developing Jalen Hurts. So what do you think of him and maybe the potential connection there for, for those two? I would think that's huge. I mean, that's a huge connection. If Kyle Trask is used the successor, if Brady doesn't come back, or even if Brady is here, I mean, this guy has shown, he knows how to work with the quarterbacks. Like what he's done with Jalen Hurts, what he did with Kyle Trask, Trask was one of the, the best quarterbacks in college football. And it was there. And I mean, this guy, a former quarterback under Urban Meyer too. He was behind Alex Smith before he became first overall pick. He has philosophy from Urban Meyer, from Dan Mullen. I mean, now he's training Jalen Hurts and he's been probably going to be MVP. I would assume if bearing his injury issues, but I mean, a really good name to think about young up and comer. I mean, do you want to miss out on someone because you want a veteran or do you want a young up-and-comer that has his head on his shoulders and is, like, on the rise? I mean, Sean McVay was a risk at one point. Now look what he's doing. So, I don't know. It's it's a, going to be a tricky task for Todd Bowles to kind of dance around and figure out what he's going to do. But it's literally – this is truly his decision to say, are we going to keep this guy as head coach moving forward or was it honestly a total mistake to let him just take over and we got a total rehaul? But – his defense is sound. I think he's going to really want someone that's going to take over completely the offense and know what the hell they're doing. So is it a young guy? Is it an older guy? Is it a mix of both? We'll see. But right. it may be eerie, but it's exciting nonetheless because 
We got a new direction. It's not going backwards. We have a chance to move forward and get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a big decision and guys, let us know what you guys think. Uh, you know, give us some, um, that we can see potentially for offensive coordinator or who do you want as offensive coordinator? Is it any of the guys that we've mentioned, or do you have someone else in mind? Please hit up those comments, like the video. And if you haven't, please subscribe. We appreciate all the subscriptions, uh, and all the support. And with that said, until the next one.